Are you looking for a travel trailer with no slide outs? Easy to maintain and no hassles? Well, stick around. We found some awesome travel trailers with no slide outs. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to our channel. And if this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I do tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell when you do so you'll be notified every single week when we release a brand new video. We also invite you to check out our website at rvblogger.com where we have hundreds of helpful articles all about RVing as well. But without any further ado, let's get started on our review of awesome travel trailers with no slide outs. This travel trailer is the StarCraft Autumn Ridge model number 20MB. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,090 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,160 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 5,250 pounds. The hitch weight is 530 pounds. It measures in at 24 feet 6 inches long and it can sleep up to 8 people. When you first walk into this travel trailer, you'll notice that your couch and Murphy bed are on the right. Then we wrap on around through the kitchen and dinette area. Off to my right here is where the bunks are located and behind me is where the bathroom is. Now, when I first walk into this travel trailer, what I feel right away is that it's got a very nice, rich, luxurious feel in here. And that's because the cabinetry and the sofa and dinette decor is kind of darker. It just looks really nice and luxurious in here. There are no slide outs in this camper and so floor space is limited, but the dinette's a really good size and we make the most of the space here with the Murphy bed and couch. And so it doesn't feel cramped or too small in here at all. It actually feels pretty good. Now on my right hand side, first thing you'll notice is this nice comfy couch with an end table on each side, which is also the end table when your bed is in place. On this side, we have receptacles located just above the end table. On the other side, we have receptacles and USB ports as well. And each of the end tables also opens up for additional storage under each of them. And then the couch itself has this little flip down door and you can access even more storage under there. Now to set up your Murphy bed, it's really pretty easy. You just jackknife the sofa out, pull the D-rings, and then this little platform folds right on out. And then you grab your mattress which is covered in plastic because it's brand new and unfold that. Now, some of you guys are going to be worried about where the fold is in the mattress and it's definitely a little more than halfway up. So you have two choices here. You can sleep on this the way it is, or when you get set up for camp, you just grab your mattress, flip it around and get the fold lower in the bed. So it's below where your hips and lower back are when you sleep and you'll be much more comfortable that way. You'll also notice here there's a, a reading light overhead that you can turn on and off with a push of a button right in the center of the light. And then on each side, you've got these nice deep wardrobe cabinets. These are really super deep. I mean, they're three feet deep. So good amount of space for you to hang your garments in here and store other things as well. And then finally, you've got some open storage over top of the bed. Now, if this were me, I would probably get some cargo netting and install it from one end to the other. So it would hold things in place while I'm traveling. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't want to put up anything up here because it might fall off the shelf while you're bouncing up and down the road. One thing I forgot to mention is that on each side, there's also a small drawer located underneath of the wardrobe cabinet. So here we are at the kitchen location, and this is what we call an inline kitchen. All of your kitchen appliances and fixtures are in line. Starting up top here, you'll notice we have a pretty good size cabinet up above for some storage area. Then you've got a regular microwave oven here, and you can fit, you know, a standard size plate in here very, very easily. Down below that, we've got a three burner propane stove. And one thing I wanna point out here is that it does have a little bit of a backsplash in place behind the stove, but there's nothing on the side of it. So if you're cooking on your stove and some food were to splatter, you know, you could mess up this side of your cabinet. So it might be a good idea to store a cutting board in this area to sort of protect it. Or if it was me, I might go out and just buy some peel and stick tile at Home Depot 
put it on the cabinet here and create my own little backsplash just to protect your cabinet. Now down below your cooktop here, you've got all these nice lighted knobs and then you even have a real oven. So if you wanna cook a pizza, bake some cookies, what have you, you are all set. Now next to your stove and oven is a huge kitchen sink. I, I almost feel like it's too big for the camper. It's gigantic. It's one of the biggest sinks I've ever seen in a camper. Ours isn't even this big in our class A, I don't think. But anyway, um, the reason I think it's too big is it because it chews up almost all of your countertop space. You are left with a little bit of countertop space over here, and you could certainly use the um, sink cover to create more countertop space in here too. Now, just next to the countertop on the side of the cabinet, is where a receptacle is located. So if you did want to use a coffee pot or a toaster here, you could easily plug it in right on the side. Down below that, we've got three full extension drawers that are really nice and deep. And then we even have more storage underneath the kitchen sink. Now, as we work our way down the inline kitchen, we get to the refrigerator location. And this is a great refrigerator. It's nice and big and tall, it's nice and deep. And this is a 12 volt refrigerator, which means it can run on shore power or a battery, and it also runs with the use of a compressor, and so that means your fridge will get colder faster, and it's much more efficient. Now, just across from the kitchen is where the dinette is located, and up top here, you'll notice you have a couple of really big cabinet doors, lots of storage space up there, nice window over top of your dinette table, and the dinette table itself is located on the campsite of the trailer, so your view out the window is a view of your campsite, which is kind of a nice thing. Now, in this dinette, I would say, you know, you could squeeze four people in here, but it would probably need to be like two adults and two kids. I don't think you're gonna get four adults at this table very comfortably. It's just a little too small. And the reason for that is because this camper doesn't have any slide outs. And usually when there's no slide outs, the trade off for that is a little bit smaller dinette. So I think they've done their best though to balance this out and give you as much dinette space as they can, but also give you enough floor space to make everything else work also. Now the dinette table will drop down and this can convert into another bed. And if you were to do that, you would end up with a bed in here that's about uh, almost six feet, so about five feet, 10 inches long. And then the width on it would be about 40 inches. And so, you know, maybe a smaller adult or a couple of kids, small kids could sleep here as well. There's also storage underneath both of the dinette benches, but you have to remove the cushions, which isn't hard to do. Just pull up the plywood underneath and then you can access all of that storage space. Now the TV location in here is right behind the dinette and this is where you would mount your TV on the wall. You'll notice that you've got your cable receptacle and other cable TV outlets up above. So everything's accessible for you. It's a good location for the TV. You can see it from the couch. You can see it from the owner's bed. Uh, if you're sitting at the dinette, the folks on that side would be able to see it. So for the most part, it works. It's really the best location in this camper for a TV. So here we are behind the dinette location and just past the kitchen. And this is where the double bunks are located. So they're double wide bunks, one over top of the other. And uh, let's see what size these are. First of all, the bunks are about 76 inches by, gosh, four feet wide. So a decent sized bunks in here. Each bunk has a sleeping weight limit of 300 pounds and a storage weight limit of 200 pounds. They do the differentiation because you can sleep up here, that's dead weight laying on here, no problem for 300 pounds. But when you're traveling up and down the road, they tell you to limit the storage to 200 pounds because that's not dead weight. When your tra travel trailer is bouncing, all that storage is bouncing and it could crush your bunk. So you don't wanna overload these while you're driving. But each of these bunks has all four, well, three out of four, of the elements that we look for when we look at bunk beds. And those are, does it have an exterior window? Does it have a light? Does it have a receptacle? And does it have USB ports? Now the top bunk has all four of those features and the bottom bunk has three out of four of those features. The only thing it's missing is USB ports. But honestly, if you have a receptacle, you can just plug your USB adapter in there and your kid can be in the bottom bunk and keep his you know, tablet or phone charged just as well, so it totally works. 
So here I am in the bathroom, which is located all the way in the back of the trailer and right next to the bunks we just looked at. And this bathroom is unique because it has a bathtub. So for you folks that have toddlers, maybe you want to give your little kids a bath, this might be a good choice for you. Now standing inside the bathtub, let's check out the the headroom that we have in here and i'm only going to measure it to the ceiling because there's not really a skylight there's just a little fan in here and i don't think you could stand and keep your head under the fan all the time but you've got about eh, six feet three inches of space in the shower which isn't bad and overall the total ceiling height in the entire camper uh comes out to about 81 inches or six feet nine inches of height so a decent amount of headroom in the camper i also like in the shower it's got a nice surround built in here and the surround has three corner shelves that you can use for your soap and shampoo it's got a removable wand and then of course it's got the one thing i don't like in a shower and that is the shower curtain uh, i really wish it had a retractable shower door here but don't let it stop you from buying this trailer i mean you can certainly Take out the shower curtain, put in your own retractable shower door, a couple hundred bucks, you got yourself a nice door. Just outside of the shower is where the commode is located. And then this is set up a little differently. This bathroom has a door that closes and then your bathroom sink is located outside of the bathroom. Now, I like this kind of setup personally, especially if you have two or three kids that are camping with you. Someone can be in the bathroom taking a shower or going to the bathroom and someone else can be out here brushing their teeth or getting their makeup on or whatever's going on. So it's a good way to split up the bathroom. Over top here, you have a nice size medicine cabinet, a very good size vanity sink with some countertop space around and you've even got a receptacle here. And then down below the sink, you have additional storage. And last but not least, here I am on the commode. And if this door were closed, I would not pass the elbow test on this side, but I've got plenty of room on the other. This travel trailer is the Forest River R-Pod, model number RP192. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,059 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,258 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 5,317 pounds. The hitch weight is 447 pounds. It measures in at 22 feet, two inches, and it can sleep up to three people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right-hand side, you have a multifunctional Murphy bed and sofa. Then it wraps on around into the kitchen area. And behind me here in the back of the trailer is where the bathroom is located. Now, when you first walk into this travel trailer, it feels like a very light, modern feel in here. And also you'll notice that it's very multifunctional. I mean, I love the fact that it's got a nice comfy couch here with a Murphy bed included because you don't use your bed all day. So you might as well have it set up as a couch for part of the day at least. And it makes the best use of the space. Now the Murphy bed itself is super easy to, to put down. You just jackknife your sofa, pull this little clip and this pops right down. And then you grab your mattress and pull it forward. And there you go. You've got your bed all set up. So let's go ahead and measure the bed in here. Now this bed measures up at, ooh, it's 80 inches long, which is a good sign. 60 inches wide. So you've got a residential queen size bed in here, which is a really nice feature to have. In addition to that, it's got a nice big window in the front that opens up so you can get a breeze blowing through here. And there's a cubby on each side at the head of the bed so you can store away more of your items there. Now on each side of the bed and the sofa, there's a wardrobe cabinet that's lighted up. There's a little switch right here. When you open it up, you can see inside and there's a bar up top so you can hang all of your garments in there. Just below the wardrobe cabinet on each side of the bed, there is a receptacle and two USB outlets so you can charge all of your electronics up. And then finally, below each of the end tables, there's additional storage below them as well. And finally, there's even more storage underneath of the sofa and it has this nice black cargo netting that holds everything in place for you. Just inside the entry door on my left and underneath the dinette booth is a little shoe storage area and a little cargo net for more storage. Now the kitchen area in here is what we would consider an inline kitchen. All of your appliances are in a line. Up top here, you've got a couple of really nice cabinet doors with the glass inlay and a very big cabinet space above. Then you have your two burner cooktop here. And uh, I think I would really prefer to see a 
a skinnier two burner and a front to back setup to give you a little bit more countertop space here. But if you close the lid on your cooktop, you do gain some countertop space that way. Also, it's got a very nice size, deep round single bowl sink with a gooseneck faucet overhead. And this also comes with a dish drain style cover, which can also give you more countertop space. Now there is a receptacle located on the side of the cabinetry. So if you have a coffee pot or toaster, you can set that up and plug it in. As we wrap on around, there's some good storage underneath of the kitchen sink area. And then we have a convection microwave oven down below. Now, just past the cooktop in the microwave is where the refrigerator is located. And this style of refrigerator is one of the older absorption style fridges. Now, these run off of propane or shore power. And, you know, they do, uh, while they do cost less money, they're a little less expensive, they do have their drawbacks as well. One of them is they take a long time to get cold. And if you're traveling, you might want to turn your propane off while you're driving up and down the road. These do not run on battery power though. So your fridge has to stay closed while you're traveling, acting more like a cooler than a fridge until you get to a spot where you can either turn back on the propane or get plugged into shore power. Now down below the refrigerator, they have a central vac plugged in or set up here. So you can sweep up all in here and then just whisk it away into your central vac central back and then right next to the refrigerator there's a mirrored cabinet here which could serve as a linen closet for your bathroom or it could be the pantry for your kitchen now just across from the kitchen area is where the dinette is located and this dinette is perfect for two people uh, as you can see it's got a nice large window here it does have some lights above that you can turn on and off individually for extra light here just above that we have more really nice cabinets with lots and lots of storage overhead. And then they went ahead and they put the TV location here as well, which works well for the couch and the bed location. Works great for one person sitting at the dinette, but if a second person's here, they're gonna block the view. A lot of people don't watch TV very much when they go camping anyway, but all in all, it's a decent spot to have your TV set up. Now, there's also storage underneath each of the dinette benches. It's hard to get to though. You have to remove all the cushions to be able to lift the piece of plywood up to get to that storage. And unfortunately, they didn't drill any finger holes in the plywood, so it's kind of hard to lift them up. If it was me, I would just get a, a hole saw or you know a, a, you know a bigger bit saw, drill a finger hole in each one of them, and then you can easily lift the plywood to access that storage area. Now this table will also drop down and the dinette will convert into another bed. And if you do that, you would end up with about six feet by 30 inches of sleeping space. So an average size adult or a child could easily sleep in this location. So here I am inside the bathroom, which is the width of the entire trailer back here. So it's a decent sized bathroom. I'm standing in the shower and uh, as you guys know, I'm 5'11", but in the skylight area, let's see how much headroom you have. You have about six feet, three inches of headroom in here. In the entire camper itself, you have about, I would say, what is that? Six feet, six inches of height throughout the entire camper. So decent amount of headroom everywhere. Now this shower is, doesn't have a surround built in. So it's a very basic type shower. Uh, there are no, you know, places to put your soap or your shampoo in here either. And finally it comes with a shower curtain. And if you've seen any of our other videos, you know, I hate shower curtains. They blow in on you while you're taking a shower hard to keep them clean. They're wet. They drip on the floor. Uh, it would be so easy just to install a retractable shower door in here. They cost less than a hundred bucks. Easy peasy. You could do it yourself. Uh, and then you'd have a much nicer and more convenient shower set up in here. Just outside of the shower, you'll notice that you have a single vanity with storage down below. And then on the other side of the bathroom, you have a rather large storage cabinet here. They kind of wasted the space above it because it's open for, I guess you could put things up there while you're camping, but while you're traveling down the road, I don't really think you can use this for any storage at all. Now, finally, when I'm sitting on the commode in here, I can pass the elbow test on my left, but I will not pass it on the right.
At the very front of this camper, underneath of the Murphy bed, we have open storage from side to side. This travel trailer is the Winnebago Micro Mini, model number 1720 FB. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,755 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,745 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 5,500 pounds. The hitch weight is 426 pounds. It measures in at just 20 feet 5 inches long and it can sleep up to three people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the left hand side, you've got some cabinet and countertop space and the bathroom is located back there. Then you wrap on around through the kitchen and dinette area and in the front of the camper is where your bed is located. All right, when you first walk into this travel trailer, my first impression is it feels a lot like a Winnebago. I mean, it's well thought out, well designed. It looks great in here and it just feels very, very comfortable. Now on my left hand side here, you'll notice that you've got all of this storage cabinetry here. And this is really just an extension of the kitchen in my opinion. I could see you maybe setting up a coffee pot over here, um, things along those lines, because there is a receptacle here. There's also a couple of USB ports. There's actually a C port built in there too. So if you needed to use this for like throwing your keys, your phone and all that stuff on the counter, you could also do that and recharge them up. Now down below here, there's another cabinet with even more storage. Now, just to my right is where the kitchen is located. And we'll start from the top and work our way down. Up top here, you have a gigantic storage cabinet in here. Now, there's no shelf in here, but you can buy a quick shelf at Amazon or Walmart or something like that and make the most out of your storage in that cabinet. But they also put a convection microwave here, which is a great choice because that way you don't have to have a separate oven and microwave, so it makes the most of the space in this smaller size camper. Down below that, we have a three burner propane stove, which is really unusual in campers that are under 25 feet, but this one's got all three, which is a great little setup. And then below that, it's got a pots and pans drawer so you can stow all of those away. Now off to my right over here is where the kitchen sink is located. And this is a really, really good sized kitchen sink. It's a big rectangular deep sink with a nice big gooseneck faucet overhead with an integral sprayer so you can wash all those dishes up nice and clean. Uh, you also have some additional countertop space here and if that's not enough countertop space there is an extend top off to the right hand side as well. There's also a receptacle located on the side of the cabinets so you could put a coffee pot here too or a toaster plug it in and be good to go. Now underneath of the kitchen sink there is also additional storage here. And then up top, you've got a little soap drawer, or I guess you could put your sponges in here. And then below that, you've got these nice full extension drawers for all of your kitchen utensils. And there's even one last drawer all the way down at the bottom, but that just opens up to where your fuses are located. Just past the microwave and the cooktop is where the refrigerator is located. This is a very good size refrigerator. I mean, it's really huge. And it is a 12 volt fridge, which means it runs on a battery or shore power. And that's a very modern uh, feature in all of the new campers that you see coming out these days. Now the dinette here easily seats two people. It's a very nice comfy dinette. Um, the table will drop down. And this can also become another bed for somebody. And if you do that, you would be looking at about and eh, just like five feet, 11 inches, <laughs> which is my height, by the way. And it's about 32 inches wide. So, you know, an average size adult or certainly a smaller child would be able to sleep here very, very comfortably. Now, also down below each of the dinette benches, they, they have little doors on here that open up so you have additional storage under there. Then, of course, you've got a really nice window above your dinette. You've got a receptacle, USB ports, and a little light under here as well. So if you're working at your dinette table, you know, scoping out where you want to go, explore the area, things like that, you can have your computer here, be able to plug it in, or just be able to, you know, recharge your phones or whatever. And then up top here... You've got four nice size cabinet doors that open up for even more storage. Now, just above the dinette on the bathroom side is where your TV location is. 
it's in a decent spot for this camper. You'd be able to see it from one side of the dinette. You could also see it while you're laying in bed in the evening, relaxing. And then below here, well, on the top of the countertop, you actually have a wireless charger for your phone. And then below that, you've got like a pantry cabinet under here for more, even more storage. So here I am all the way at the front of this travel trailer, which is where your bed is located. And the first thing you'll note back here is there's a little end table on this side of the bed. There's also a receptacle and USB ports here. And there's also some open storage down below that. Speaking of storage, there's even some more storage underneath of the bed because this little door opens and swings out so you can access that area. Now, when you're in bed, you've got, like I mentioned, USB ports here. You also have them on the other side of the bed and a little cargo net pocket there. So no matter which end of the bed you want to sleep on, you can, you know, charge your phones or whatever you need to do. Now there's also a window on each side of the bed location, which I really love. You can open up the windows, get some nice cross breeze in here and enjoy some nice fresh air. Up above me here, you've got a light that clicks on and off right here at the bed location. And then we have plenty of storage overhead as well. Now the mattress in here is really unusual because it's not as big as it could be for some reason. Maybe, uh, I'm not really sure why, but I measured it already and you could fit an 80 inch mattress by 60 inches, which is a residential queen size mattress in the bed location. Now here we are in the bathroom and of course I'm standing in the shower and as you guys know, I'm 5'11". Now in the skylight area here, there is probably two inches over my head. Uh, so if you are taller than, say, 6'1", you're going to have to crouch down a little bit to fit into this shower stall. But I will say this. They did add a retractable shower door in here, which is an awesome feature. Much, much better than having a shower curtain. And then, of course, you've got your shower head, which, you know, the wand attaches, and you can use that however you would like. Now, what I don't see in here is any place to put your soap or shampoo. And I also don't see a vanity in the bathroom. Except, wait a minute, this baby pops on down, and this is where your bathroom sink would be. Wash your hands under here. Now, some of you guys are probably wondering where the heck is the sink drain. And basically what happens is all the water co collects in the bowl. When you close it, the water pours through here, and it ends up going down into the drain, same drain that the shower uses. Now, outside of the shower, is where the commode is located. It's a little cramped in here, I gotta say. If this, when this door is shut, it's, you know, pretty. It might even hit your knee. It'll hit your knee. It's pretty tight in here. You kind of have to sit. That's why I'm kind of sitting at an angle. You kind of have to sit at an angle in here to make it work. It will pass, pass the elbow test on one side, but definitely not the other. Now, underneath the owner's bed, it's almost all storage, which is accessible from both sides of the trailer. Hey guys, let us know which one of these travel trailers you like the most and why in the comments down below. We'd love to hear from you about all the features you think are really cool inside of these trailers. And if you'd like to see even more campers with no slide outs, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.